Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about one of the greatest designers of board games ever, Klaus Teuber. Um, Klaus Teuber, several weeks ago, passed away at the age of 70, and it's a very sad thing. And I just wanted to kind of talk about and give him a little bit of tribute about the games that he has designed. Now, I haven't played everything that he has put out, but I have played a lot of it. And I wanted to talk about that just a bit today, if you haven't heard him, because his legacy is very, very valuable and important to our hobby. So we'll start with the elephant in the room, which is the game that obviously almost everyone associates with him, and that is the Settlers of Catan. Funnily enough, I want to mention that Klaus Teuber has won the Spiel des Jahres Award four times. This is the game of the year in Germany. It's the most prestigious board game award in the world. And the fourth time and last time he won it was the Settlers of Catan, which is amazing to me. He was already there, but that game eclipsed everything else he did. You know, and, and Catan, as, it, it's, as the years went by, they shortened it from Settlers of Catan to just Catan, has just kind of gotten into pop culture where you hear actors and sports people and famous people talking about Catan because this game just hits people where they're at. This game came out um, in, you know, so many years ago and it's still being played. And then the year after Catan came out in 95, in 96, there was a card game, Catan card game, which eventually was called Rivals for Catan. But he took this game and made a two-player version of it, but the two-player version of it was so different from the base game. Catan was not a great game with two players when he came out. They made a five to six player expansion. I'm not sure it's great with that either, but people wanted to play it because people loved it. It was exploding. And we also need to realize that between Catan and this Catan card game, people in America wanted to play these games. And so uh, Jay Tummelson, working for Mayfair at the time, helped bring them over from Mayfair, and this became a big thing. People in America said, what are these games? Rolling dice for resources, what a cool concept. It felt so different than anything that we were playing over here. And the German games, at the time when we just called them as that kind of a nickname, started to make headway into America. In 97, Seafair as a Catan came out, which was an expansion for the Catan and did really well at it. Didn't add a lot of complexity, but allowed you to build boats and the maps became a little bigger. In 1998, Cities and Knights of Catan came out, which added actually a lot of complexity to the game. Very divisive expansion. Some people thought too much. Other people said this is the only way to play, where now there were more resources in the game. You were building all sorts of different things, little flip books. In 99, Starfarers of Catan came out. Catan went into space. Um, this one had big plastic spaceships that you would shake up and you would go around and run into different encounters um, and you moved around a map. Really neat game. And the two-player version of that game came out in 2001, Starship Catan, which again was as different from Starfarers as the Catan card game was from Settlers of Catan. That game actually was remade in 2014 as Northwind, which is a multiplayer game. And in fact, Starship Catan just recently was, it was announced that they're remaking that game. Then Zellers of Catan became so popular that they started putting it in other, it, it was kind of a generic, you know, almost fantasy, hey, we found a place, we're colonizing it. Then the Settlers of the Stone Age came out in 2002, and so did Settlers of Canaan uh, in 2002. A kid's version came out in 2003. In 2005, almost well, not almost 10 years after it came out, they came out with a big giant deluxe edition. Now this sounds, you know, nowadays, lots of games have big deluxe editions, but back in um, 2005, that was a much rarer thing. I mean, I know there was a deluxe version of Monopoly, maybe one of Scrabble. So this was a really cool thing to see. And then they just, then everything, 2006, Struggles for Rome, then the dice game, Catan dice game, then Catan Geographies Germany, which actually is one of the best versions of Catan, 2008. The Settlers of America, Trails to Rails in 2010. Catan Junior in 2011. The Merchants of Europe. Star Trek Catan came out in 2012. And then more expansions like Explorers and Pirates came out in 2013. And the Catan train has been rolling strong to the point where when Mayfair was bought by Asmodee, Mayfair kind of dissolved. But Asmodee separated Catan into its 
own company, its own business, and Catan is still going strong today. So if that was all that Claus Toyber had done, I think Catan would be, that's a pretty good legacy. And it is going to be his biggest legacy. A game that sold millions and millions and have brought thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds. I don't, we don't know the number of people into the hobby. But he also had a lot of other great games I want to quick mention. Um, his first game, that, as far as I can find, in 1988, Barbarossa. Not only did Barbarossa also win the Spiel des Jahres, but the thing about Barbarossa that I find fascinating is, it's if you never heard of this game, um, it is a game in which you are molding clay. And you're like, oh, I'm not good at that sort of thing. Yeah, I know. And Klaus Teuber knew that. So in this game, you're making shapes, and you want people to guess them, but not too early. You also don't want them to never guess it. So you're kind of making, so even someone who's good at clay is going to make theirs a little bit more abstract. And this concept has been used in many, many party games. I want to, I think Barbarossa may be the first one to have this in play. Hoity Toity, um, which has a different name in German. And when this game first came out um, the, in, 1990, uh, in 1990, this also won the Spiel des Jahres. This game, while not a huge hit in America, having the name Hoity Toity didn't really help it. This game was a mega hit. This was in like every household in Germany when it came out. So um, that's one. Wacky Wacky West. This also got a lot of acclaim, although this one's more of a silly one where you're trying to build out some tiles in a western town and not cover up the bathrooms. Ant Decker, an exploration game if you want to go out and feel exploration, came out in 1996. Then they made a second edition of it in 2001. Lowenhurts, widely known as one of his meaner games, came out in 1997. Although they made he made a somewhat nicer game, a meaner game, and this is my personal favorite of his games in 2003, called Domain. Domain is still a fantastic game as you build out your kingdoms and try to encroach in your neighbor's kingdoms and go back and forth and control different areas. He made a silly kids game called Pop Belly, where you feed a pig and hope it doesn't pop. Another silly kids game called Chip Chip Hurrah, where you use catapults to launch computer disks onto a board so that your robots could munch them up. Uh, Anno 1503 came out in 2003 along with Domain. He made a game called Candemere, The First Settlers. Now this was based on Settlers of Catan, and he had a few games that came from Settlers of Catan, another one called Ellison, The First City. These were very different games. Candemere was almost, the best way to describe it would be an adventure RPG, but you're not fighting stuff, you're like hunting and building and things like that. And Ellison, The First City, was about building a city, but these were kind of based on Catan, uh, Oceana in 2004, and then Tumult Royal in 2015. Now, there's no question that once Catan came out, that's where Mr. Toyber put all his energy into that and the various spin-offs and stuff, but they're good. And so I am in the hobby of board gaming. I run the Dice Tower here, and there is no small part of what we do that we don't owe to Mr. Toyber. That he has done so much for the hobby, and so for me, I want to say thank you. Because playing these games has been great for me. I've run into thousands and thousands of people who play them and then say, I would like to find out more about the hobby. Um, and it's just fantastic. Even if Catan is the one game and the only game people have played, I think that's amazing. So there's so much that he's done. So thank you, sir. And if you've never played some of these games, they might be worth your while checking out. I'm Tom Vassell. Thank you, Claus Toyber. Until next time, you're watching The Dice Tower.